Mrs. Vanderwater? Here. Ms. Lesniak? Here. Mr. Tupper? Here. Mr. Dzinski? Here. Ms. Saban? Here. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the regular meeting, the regular meeting minutes for February 2nd meeting? Second. Any changes? Then I did, uh, if you could just, well, my name was spelled incorrectly on the Ooh. second bottom line. <laughs> Any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Teresa, you are up with the assessor's report, please. Okay, good evening. Um, first, there's a correction. This is not your only report for 2022. Um, I was updating my December report that I didn't get to deliver because of uh, COVID uh, restrictions. Um, and neglected to it should be January 2022 to February 2022, not December. Um, all of our exemption renewals for 2022 for the assessor all have been mailed and this past couple of weeks we sent reminder postcards to anybody that haven't already been in. They're being processed and updated as received and the deadline for exemption applications as always for new applications and renewals is March 1st. The governor suspended the renewal requirement for the senior citizen and the disability exemptions for 2022. You may remember that they did that a year ago um, and they made that mandatory. This year, it was subject to local option, and it was decided that the local option was not needed because by the time they did this in December, we had already mailed our renewals in September with the majority of them already returned and processed. So we, we didn't opt into that. And um, by the way, neither did Lysander. Inventory changes for 2022 are entered as the building permits are completed and our final field review of building permits will be scheduled during February and March as the weather permits. Uh, the reassessment plan for 2022 has been completed and submitted to the Office of Real Property Tax Services for their review and approval. And this included a plan narrative, um, commercial sales to subjects uh, spreadsheet, and version four reports for documentation. Our reappraisal work this year includes all residential properties. They will either be individually reappraised or the na entire neighborhood will be trended up based on their level of assessment. A total of 115 commercial properties between Van Buren and Lysander will be appraised, reappraised, and assessments changed as indicated. All vacant land assessed higher than 15,000 will also be trended up because vacant land sales have gone up. Um, and the, the ceiling of 15,000 and above, that eliminates um, oddly shaped properties, wetlands, um, landlocked parcels that, that really don't change much in value. Um, county trends or increases from 2021 to 2022 are residential between the county ranges from 6% to 15%. Commercial is plus three, and vacant land is plus seven. Um, preliminary assessment notices will be mailed in mid-March. Informal meetings with the assessor will be scheduled in late March through April, April as we always do. Um, this year we're gonna offer a choice of in-person or phone meetings, and that's if everything remains quiet with um, our pandemic. And we're gonna offer that choice, and they will be scheduled in blocks um, by type. So one morning will be maybe in person in the afternoon by phone and vice versa. Um, and attached to your report is my continuing education status report. And I'm si sorry to say for the second time in over 20 years, I have a warning um, that I did not meet, um, that I did not have the 12 credits last year. Um, just so you're aware, in 2019 to 2020, um, the governor suspended our requirement for those 12 credits because of the pandemic. Um, the problem was that only was a year, and and we're still, you know, two years into this. Uh, our choices of uh, classes are very limited, and last year, uh, because of vacation. Um, conflicts. I could not go to Cornell, which is one of my options. Um, and because of my dad being in the hospital, I couldn't attend the fall conference in October. 
So I've already reserved um, um, lodging for Cornell, and I'm waiting for um, the actual classes, and then I'll submit that for approval. Um, and then we'll see how the um, fall conference goes in September. Questions or concerns? Uh, on your education, Cornell will give you how many credits? Um, right now, plan A is to go to Cornell for the week, which will give me um, 24 credits, which will basically give me two years. Um, and then, um, depending on what's going on with, you know, with the virus and whether they can do the fall conference, because um, sometimes they have to do it remote mm -hmm. um, if the hotel can't accommodate the crowds. So plan A is to go for a whole week to Cornell, which would give me 24 credits. Um, plan B is to attend the fall conference if possible. And then I'll be back in the state's good graces. Okay. Questions? Yes. <clears throat> Where do we fall in the county uh, trends on residential homes? Towards the low end or the high end? Um, the city of Syracuse is six. Skinny Atlas and Spafford are 15. Uh -huh. Van Buren is 10. And Lysander is 12. So not the low end. No. I have to imagine you're not the only assessor who had continuing education credit issues. Uh, no. Yeah. no I, I, <laughs> so would imagine, I would imagine there's probably quite a few. I just, um, for the first year, everything across the board was canceled. Um, and they're doing some one-day seminars, but they're all virtual. Uh, and it's, it's kind of impossible to do them when you get interrupted because you, you have to have the... You have to have the camera and the mic, and you have to, they have to make sure you're there. Because I guess they had problems with people that signed on and then just kind of disappeared. Kind of like remote learning for the kids. Um, so, um, so basically now you have to be fully engaged with a camera and a microphone for the entire class in order to get the credit. Um, and um, they've been very limited. They're just doing the one days like that. A few of them one days. I've been hoping for some hybrids um, because our office is in Liverpool. Our main office is in Liverpool, and they have done a couple of hybrids um, where they had remote for the people that didn't want to come to Liverpool, and then they had in classroom for people that wanted to go. Um, and they were both classes that I'd already taken, and I, I wouldn't get credit for them, so I didn't have any luck there either. Any other questions for Teresa? Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, number two, uh, approve the annual maintenance agreement with 911 generators and authorize the supervisor to sign the agreement. Can I get a motion, please? Moved. Second. Any discussion? Just so you all know, uh, this building is an emergency location. And that's why we have the generator. Uh, a couple of years ago when they came to do maintenance uh, for $385, they had actually ended up spending closer to 600 So we actually got a break on that one. So, so we got to get that scheduled again. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Next, uh, authorize the clerk to attend the New York State uh, Linwood uh, Town Clerk Town Association. Clerk Association. Yes, I just drew a blank on that one. Thank you. That's a guess. Yeah. Um, authorize the clerk to return the NYS TCA meeting as per the clerk's memo and not to exceed $40 plus mileage. Moved. Second. Any discussion? Just I Go ahead. A quick question, is there any chance it could go over $40? No. 45 50 or anything like that? Okay. Nope. Is it local? It's in Alkmaar. Pretty local. Oh. So for the statewide, it's fairly local. I only know that it's APW because they're always closed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to be facetious and say I'm jealous I can't go with you when, but... To <laughs> Maybe next year we'll budget for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> okay. It's a little economic impact to Alvar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay, uh, number four, approve the annual training required for the planning ZBA members on March 10th in Syracuse at a cost of $320. Can I get a motion, please? Moved. Second. Right. Any discussion? I have it. Go ahead. Are they already signed up for the training? It has to go in tomorrow to meet the, the I was just going to say, I got an email this morning yep. that 217 was the last day for the discounted rate. Yes, exactly. And is it for the whole board or just new members? Actually, everybody on the board has to attend. Everybody. Um, this year, there are four that are taking the class uh, downtown, and the others um, are architects or engineers, so they will get the same training through their regular uh, employment. But they do have to provide documentation if they have training. Yeah. It's, it's four minimum. hours on an annual basis. Yeah. So if this if they stay for all six hours, then they can carry two over to the following year. Well worth it. Yeah. And required, so. I just hope that new member you have, that Mr. Sykes, Oh, he goes. He's good. <laughs> he really he he's a shady dude. I think he's out of town, actually. Yeah. He, he is, but he's doing that. Um, he can do it at a different one. Who so. even put him in that position? <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, let's see. Uh, number five, approve the attendance at the February Association of Town Teams training for the supervisor and comptroller for a combined total of $150. Can I get a motion for that? I'll move that. Second. Uh, just for some other information on this, the uh, supervisor line was budgeted for $2,000 for the newly elected uh, officials training. Nothing was used there. The Association of Towns training that is in the supervisor's line is budgeted at 750. So this will come out of uh, both of those will come out of this at 150 dollars, and it's on Monday the 21st, which is the town holiday, and the 22nd. So, oh joy, so much for that holiday. <laughs> uh, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next, uh, approve the comptroller's attendance at the annual Government Finance Officials Association Conference in April, not to exceed $1,500 for the conference and mileage, and then for the virtual Office of the State Comptroller Accounting Training in April at a cost of $85. Can I get a motion for that, please? Move. I'll second. Any discussion? Is yes. this something that she goes to every year? Or well, she didn't, but uh, Greg did every year, yeah. yeah. So Where this is budgeted. Oh, yeah. Where is the oh. Albany. Okay. Yeah. That explains it. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> by going to this, she also gets CPA um, credits as well, as she could possibly get a couple of CPA credits at the Association of Towns training. So if she gets one or two for $100, you know, that in its of itself pays for it, so. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, number seven. Uh, approve the Canton Woods Senior Center Agreement and authorize the supervisor to execute and um, authorize the payment of $66,900 to the village of Baldwinsville. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Do we do it in two payments or do we do a lump one lump? One, one lump sum. Were any significant changes made at the Cantor's board meeting? Um, nothing significant, but I'll review that during my um, counselor comments. Okay. Nothing significant. Yeah, I just want to point out we did talk about this quite a bit and the whole um, getting their expenses a little bit under control and using some of their surplus. So appreciate that conversation that we had and I appreciate Wendy um, meeting with the board and all that stuff too. Well, also on this, Wendy, if you can get uh, Canton Woods to give you a listing of how many people from Van Buren are members in the village and uh, Lysander, so that we have an and idea. Outside. And, and outside. Um, so we have an idea of how many people are actually going. So uh, as we get into discussions for next year, mm -hmm. you know, not only do we have the justification of, you know, budgets matters, but you know, the number of people that we're supporting with that. Sure. Okay. 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Next, um, approve the trash hauler license to Giorgio. Companies doing business as rid of it. Can I get a motion for that, please? Move. Second. Any discussion? Lynn, if you don't have this off the top of your head, I don't I can get it later, but I'm just curious how many companies are doing business in Van Buren now? Seven. Seven, okay. I'm not even going to ask if there's any problems with them like Pat would have. <laughs> I was thinking they about haven't started yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I think it's important for people to know that they have seven options in our town for trash services. Oh. Yeah, as the population grows, we might need more. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Good. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, Councilor and committee reports. Mike? Nothing. Thank you. Darcy? Um, I did want to talk about a couple things. So we had a, a, a joint land use and economic development committee meeting last Tuesday, uh, powered myself and Wendy. And um, we met with um, Len Rausch, who is in the economic development department at the county. And um, I thought it was really, I mean, you too feel free to chime in too. I thought it was a really good meeting to kind of try and uh, just put ourselves on the map at the county. You know, we wanted to come across as we are pro-business. We are looking to bring commercial into our industrial zoned areas. And um, I just thought it was a really good starting point for us to kind of get our head around how best to market this. I mean, it's not parcels that we own, but we still want to somehow you know, attract people. So obviously he meets with site selectors daily, weekly, monthly, and I think this will help that he knows that we are ready and willing to uh, you know, be business friendly. So I thought it was a really good meeting. I agree, it was very productive. We had a lot of ideas and I think it's important that we get some guidance, especially like on um, some development because we don't know what's out there. He can lend us to some networking opportunities to, you know, right. businesses reach out to the county before they're going to reach out to the town. So it's great to have some someone to co-op with. So I thought it was great. Good start. And so we'll definitely invite Len back and, um, you know, keep this kind of momentum moving as he starts to, I mean, everyone is just starting to get back into business of what they really do because COVID just ruined everything. So. I, yeah. think, I think he was impressed that we plan ahead and pay forward. Yes, for he did. He appreciated he that. that made it a lot easier for the company to, yep. to uh, send customers to us. Having right. a comprehensive plan, having strong zoning and codes and all of that is helpful. And, and they also were on the map. We're one of the growing towns. So people are coming to this town specifically in this area, the Baldensville community. So. Oh. Are we moving in the right direction as far as water and sewers and zoning and all that stuff this far? I think so. We did. We talked about it a little bit because the number one thing that we did stress is that we appreciate our rural character in this town. Mm -hmm. And actually, that was the second topic at our meeting was, you know, kind of talking about solar and ag and prime farmlands and how important those are to us. So you can see a pretty clear line of demarcation in our town. Everything east of 690 is is open and ready to be developed or is and then west is rural and and we appreciate that. So and, and he appreciated that we, to your point, have very specific zoned areas and where we where we, we see commercial going, where we see residential going and where we would like to see forever green. So it's a balance. And that ties into the comprehensive plan yes. uh, that we meeting we had. Right, so that was a little bit of a shock. Um, we have a plan from O2. Mm -hmm. Do you let me pump this back to you, or no? You, you can, can go keep for going? it. Okay. So um, we spoke with MF and I met with representatives from SACBA, Syracuse Sondaga County Planning Agency, mm -hmm. to talk about what resources might be available to us to update the plan. <laughs> so um, the executive director, um, Dan Kwasnowski, is great, phenomenal to work with, really. But he threw out a number. It's about $100,000 to bring in a consultant to do it right, to really take, especially if you have a current plan, it's even more expensive if you're starting at ground zero. So, but to take our plan, engage the community for us, 
and, and start to prioritize what could stay the same, what needs updating. I mean, we know some things will need updating. It's from O2. So, um, but no, that was a really productive meeting as well. Tony Geis was in there as well. And just based on what we said, what we were planning on with our, some of our ARPA funds, where we had designated commercial, and we even gave them an idea of exactly where our commercial and industrial sites were, some additional sites across from the highway garage, um, they were actually pretty amazed at how much we had together. They are going to be helping us put together an application for New York State uh, to, uh, to submit a grant to get the money for the comprehensive plan. But still, on the local level, we're going to have to put, put in probably close to $25,000. It will require a match, so, local yeah. match, which we've started to budget for, yep. but we'll have to this yep. year too. Yep. Um, and they also really did appreciate where we are going to be attractive in the grant application is our stress for economic and commercial development. And so that's hopefully where we'll get the grant funding because that's our focus right now. So. Well, I think we need a joint resolution from the planning board, the town board, against the governor's initiative to halt single family home zoning. That's I saw that. Like agenda 21 yeah. from the UN. Can we stop that or we try to? I think that'll probably have to come up for discussion. I wasn't prepared tonight to call another meeting, but I did see that mm -hmm. and we will want to talk about that. We may want to do a resolution from the board or at the very least a letter to our state reps expressing our. It just concerns. came out just recently, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I likened it to when they took Star over. And, you know, it's another one of those places where there, it was handled well at the local level and then just became a hot. But I don't want to see a lot of board I actually, I like it more too what they've done with solar, where they just said solar, you can't touch anything over 20 megawatts, where they just usurp entirely municipal home rule law. They're doing that, that's kind of the same thing here. It's approaching it, yeah. And it's interesting because their argument is because of our population growth, and yet I believe the last census said we've lost population. So In the sure state. They, yes. Yeah. So how the state legislature is passing legislation for housing to address our population growth when they're losing population. I'm not sure how you reconcile right. those statements. The only thing I was going to add to Darcy's comments about the um, comprehensive plan, that's a hard pill to swallow. I'm not going to lie. I, that nobody likes to say, wants to spend that kind of money, especially for a comprehensive plan, which you go, ooh, we have one. The, one thing I will say in support of that is Statutorily, you have an obligation. If you have a comprehensive plan, your zoning has to be consistent with your comprehensive plan. So mm -hmm. as you dabble with your zoning, you change zoning and you make it suit your evolving needs. If your comprehensive plan doesn't match your zoning states, and later on somebody wants to take you to court and say, guess what? What you're doing isn't consistent with your comprehensive plan, they'll win. Mm -hmm. So as your population rises, I know I just said population going down, but I'm talking about Van Buren. <laughs> 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 but as your population, as, as Van Buren and the Bal greater Baltonsville area is, becomes more attractive and you are trying to attract more commercial businesses and you're trying to perhaps develop zoning to, to attract or to be more specific as to what those commercial and business um, interests are, you want to make sure your comprehensive plan is consistent with that. And something from 2002, there's a good chance is not. Because they actually recommend that you not go more than 10 years before you update your comprehensive plan. Well, I still have the meeting minutes from the uh, 2013 comprehensive meetings that we had that just didn't move forward because it just wasn't pushed enough from the planning board and the town board. It's daunting. Yeah. You know, you get into it and it's, it's not a particularly mm -hmm. fun. But one thing that we have to do for this grant is say, you know, what we're going to keep in the plan, what we want to change in the plan for this grant application. So the planning board does have a lot of work to do, and Tony did put it out to the planning board already, and then we'll have one more joint meeting so that we can get this application in. It's basically Chapter 200 yep. comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And we've adjusted that as we go along. So we're halfway caught up. It's like paying taxes and dividends every year instead of at the end of the bond. That's Howard's analogy. <laughs> Darcy, we also talked that. about updating the maps in there. Did you? Yep, yeah. MF and I have discussed that too. And uh, we, you know, it's just those are also 22 years old now. So, so would you wait to update those 
after the comprehensive plan or can we move to have those done now because Probably a little bit of both some I mean, of them yeah. should be updated especially and as zoning for do we know if that is something that esf did as like work for us you know um with their students or did we actually pay for those we did both it cost us about twenty thousand dollars but the professor brought his whole class into it for credit Okay, so that's another fee that we need to work on budgeting. I also would want to check with the county. I mean, they've yeah. got some GIS specialists and, and a little mm -hmm. bit better equipment now than they had in 2000, and that they, might be something they can offer. Okay. They yeah. have been very good at getting GIS stuff to um, Jason. So. We okay. even got into abandoned rail lines and things like that. Mm -hmm. okay. It was pretty... No, it was hard. It definitely put we're like looking at we're like, does that say two thousand as we're using these oh, yeah. some current discussion? Well, and it's funny, you sit in that room and you never realize they were from two thousand two, like mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Well, there were citizen committees too. We brought in people from outside. We're gonna have to do that for this too, because, because that's the, the only way you'll get community buy in, you know, is yeah, having I people don't think participate. It be just up to us. No, right. No. And that's part of what a consultant would coordinate too. Mm -hmm. So I mean yeah. I think that's it for me. That's too much. Wendy? Um, I have a couple things. I'm going to do the easy one first. Um, I know a couple sessions ago we talked about that there was a vacancy on the BAR, and I know that we discussed putting something on the town's website, just encouraging anybody, any resident who was interested in any of our um, boards or committees to reach out. Um, I don't see that that's on the web page. I just wonder, I'm just kind of circling back. Did we agree that we were going to put something on the website and it just hasn't been done or do we need to? Um, no, we can we can put it on the website um, and I'll, I'll get with Lynn this week to okay. get that done. Yep. That was more in general though, if yeah. you're interested in serving in any capacity in the town, Correct. right? For so any send, or planning. Send or, a resume, letter of interest, yes. CV, whatever. So okay. yeah, I just I had checked and I didn't see anything, so I wanted to make sure I didn't misunderstand and if it how fell through the cracks, someone will address it and then just reaching out to, you know, folks that are here if if anyone's interested in participating in any open board meeting or board uh, position, whether it's the BAR or zoning, um, reach out to our supervisor, send in a resume, a brief bio or anything. We're very anxious to get any residents who want to be involved in government to step forward. Um, the other thing I just wanted to circle back on, um, I did attend the Canton Woods um, board meeting a couple weeks ago and I sent an email, I circulated an email with um, a, a follow up to um, what that uh, meeting covered. And there were a couple loose ends in that email, so I just wanna make sure we circle back on that. Um, the first thing that I just wanna go over, there was a huge discrepancy in the um, accounting from 2021. They, um, their bottom line of expenses was like 12,005, which was a huge difference of what they budgeted. It was a difference of 8,122. So I wanted to circle back with the board to let them know what that was um, re a result of. Um, the treasurer was not at the meeting, so we had to wait for Ruth to reach out to the treasurer and get back to us. So it's just a weird thing. It's the majority of that $8,000 difference is um, all based on fundraising. One of their biggest fundraisers is the Christmas wreaths. So they essentially front the money and pay for it, but when they get the money from the um, customers, it doesn't hit the books until the following year. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of closing out an account. Um, so I just wanted to circle back and talk about that. The other thing that I wanted to mention was, I know that I had said that the village hadn't closed their books and we need that information so we can you know, have oversight. Have you had an opportunity to reach out to the village to see when they were gonna get that information? Uh, I had a quick conversation with uh, the mayor last week um, and it was brought up. I will push him on that one. I know they that- use our same, Do they use a calendar year, January to December? Or are they on a different fiscal no, year? No, it's calendar. Oh, it is. But I know that like, I mean, at my job right now, they're just wrapping up awesome. their books, and some of my landlords don't finish it until March or April. So it's not unusual that we haven't seen it, but I just thought maybe if we reached out and said, hey, you know, we didn't forget, we're, we're waiting on this, it might put a little pressure on them. 
Yeah, at the county you could pay a bill from 21 up to like the January 28th or something. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now it just yeah. takes a little while to flush out. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and I did get an email. Um, the whole board reached out regarding um, a commercial floor cleaner. So I think I had mentioned in my email that they were starting to look at ways to spend down their monies in the memorial. So they are purchasing a commercial floor cleaner out of their memorial fund. So I was like, yay, they're spending money. <laughs> so I think, um, I think we'll see more of that coming along because I think they're like acknowledging like we have way too much money sitting in these funds. We need to start spending. <laughs> they always set their gift revenue higher than it is. Then it comes in. I guess that's optimistic. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that leads to shortfalls, but. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was all that I wanted to circle back. I'm just perusing this like email really quick. I think that was really it. Um, and I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, Howard? Nothing. Ron? Yep. Um, the park has been very, very busy up there. And we're trying to move forward with it this year. We're trying to get the pool open. There's a lot of things going on. And I just wanted to touch base with some things that Heidi has been working on. Um, right now, she'll be working on a summer concert series, and that's going to be happening February 18th. Um, February? Oh, so it did happen. Yeah, February 18th. Tomorrow. It's coming up tomorrow. Okay. Um, so she's working on that. Um, also, the it's a little late now, but the winter brochure is out, and that'll be up until March. And then right now she's working on the summer one, and that'll be coming out at the end of March, 1st of April. Um, right now she's taking applications for summer help, lifeguards, cashiers, summer playground staff will be interviewing, and that'll be starting sometime in March. Um, we've been working with um, with the schools to try to get um, instructors to teach some of these courses and um, she's reaching out for that and um, the pavilions open on February 1st um, it's a slow roll on it right now up there she's making some headway people are starting to come up and use the park and there's many other things but I thought I just wanted to touch base on the few items that's happening up there right now that's Ron, it. Ron I know that um on the brochures, the winter brochure and the summer brochures, the school didn't wa did not want her distributing them through the school because of COVID, uh -huh. and she could only put them on the website. Do you know is she printing again and distributing through the school districts? Okay. Uh, when I spoke to her the other day, she's uh, meeting with the school district to try to get them to allow that to go forward. Okay. So there's still uh, some. I don't want to say pushback, but some concern still about putting those in the school. So she is working to try and get that done. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Doug, anything from you, sir? Nothing this evening. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Uh, supervisor's comments. Just want to remind everyone that Assemblyman Magnarelli has his constituent survey Zoom meeting on Tuesday, March 1st at 6 o'clock, and also on Wednesday, March 16th at 6 p.m. You can contact uh, the Assemblyman's office, or you can go online uh, to his, uh, uh, his website, newyorkassembly.gov slash member, or slash mem slash William B. Magnarelli, and that will get you the Zoom link, or you can call the office and they will put you on that as well. So again, it's regarding um, the comments for uh, his constituents here in Van Buren. Okay. I emailed, they just said they'd add me to a list for yeah. now. So I yeah. guess that's. Um, that's all I have, citizens' comments. Don't everybody talk at once. <laughs> okay. Uh, I excuse the engineer for tonight. Nadine, anything else? Something that I didn't bring up in the work session. Okay. All right, can I get a motion to adjourn to uh, March 2nd at 7 p.m.? Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you for coming.